Hi, I'm Seben Yaakov. This presentation is entitled MOSFET, Safe Operating Area, SOA Simulation, and Capacitor Precharger Example. Please note that there is a relevant video to this presentation. Here is the link to it, and I'm going to print the link in the description section of this uh, YouTube video that you are now watching. So what is a MOSFET Self Operating Area? The safe operating area is the locus, the place on a plane of drain current and VDS voltage at which operation is safe. And here is a way that manufacturers are giving this information, the typical SOA plot. We see here the current, the drain current, the drain to source voltage. This is for this transistor, it's a Infineon MOSFET. 100 volt maximum, 2.7 milliohm, and uh, it has a 175 degree Celsius junction temperature, maximum temperature. Obviously, you don't want to get close to it. And here is the package. So this particular transistor, and here is the SOA plot for it. Now, what we see here is first of all a limitation of 100 volt. You don't want to go above 100 volt. This is a 100 volt of this transistor. Then we have here a limitation which is the RDS on. Notice that if I say uh, at uh, say this is one volt okay and the current here is about say 180 or something like that then one volt divided by this uh, current is the RDS on so you can't go above it because there is a resistance there when the transistor is in the switching mode this is when it is completely on this region is for the transistor in the linear mode because we have a voltage across the transistor any current it's not limited by the rds on no, no more because the voltage is high and here what we see here is the number of curves this one says that for one microsecond pulse you can have a, cur a current no more than this value here, okay, say 300 amp. Now, if you have a pulse which is wider than that, say uh, one millisecond in this pulse here, now this curve says that, that this is the limit, you have to be below it, and for example, if uh, the voltage is, I don't know, say 10 volt on the transistor, and we have a one millisecond curve, the current shouldn't be higher than, uh, this is the 150, say, amp, okay? So, uh, this is a limitation in the linear mode. We have also the DC current. This is when the current is continuous. And as you can see, as the voltage of the transistor is higher and higher, the current that is allowed in this linear mode is, of course, uh, smaller and smaller and only when the voltage is uh, very low you can have high current. If you notice there is also a break here, okay? So there's this curve and there's the break. Now this region is the so-called secondary breakdown of Spirito. Spirito is the name of a person. He wrote a paper on this phenomena. And what it is that if you have a transistor operating in the linear mode, you might have a secondary breakdown due to crowding of current within the surface of the MOSFET, that is the current is concentrated in a certain region which are getting very hot and then there could be a breakdown. Now manufacturers today give you this curve here which would imply that if you are below each curve for a given width of a pulse then you are safe. Okay, that's the meaning of this curve. And of course, uh, this region is a little bit sensitive and you might be well um, testing it if you are designing a circuit just to make sure that really you don't have any problem. Remember that this is for 25 degrees and of course the behavior is changing as the temperature is changing. So we have uh, this safe operating area which means that if we are in the linear mode even for a short time, we have to watch it we cannot have just any current with any voltage on the transistor. We have to be below these lines. Now, one area, for example, that this could be of a concern is the 
circuit for pre-charging a capacitor. Okay, if we are to connect a capacitor to a voltage, this is the main switch. We cannot just turn it on because then we're going to have a very high current, could be damaging. So we have to turn it on slowly and we can do it by a circuit like that. We turn on this transistor, which is the N channel. This is the P channel. You can actually add a capacitor here to slow down the rise of the gate to source voltage. But then even so, when you hit the threshold, then you build up a current very quickly. And so, say in the very beginning, there is no voltage across this capacitor. There is a voltage here, so the whole voltage is on the transistor. And if the current is too high, then you might be violating the safe operating area, so you really have to watch it. So in this case, there is no control, so it's really very dangerous. And in a previous video that I have mentioned, I have shown that this can be sort of uh, controlled by having a circuit like this, which is controlling the current through this capacitor to be charged. And it turns out that the current through this capacitor is this expression here, which is this drive voltage, this is the voltage here, divided by the resistance, this resistor here, and the ratio of this capacitor between the capacitor that we are to charge and this auxiliary capacitor. When this auxiliary capacitor is small, then of course this uh, current of the main capacitor is large, and when this capacitor is large, then this will be a lower current. So this actually controls the current, and by that you can actually uh, avoid the problem associated with the safe operating area, okay? So let's have a look now, it's uh, by simulation, how this circuit works. We have the transistor. This is the same transistor I've shown in the data sheet there. And this is the capacitor to be charged, three mini farad. This is the auxiliary capacitor. And we have here a source, which is like a step turning on the system and current starts to flow, flowing here and here. And this capacitor will be charged. And here it is. This is the control signal. And here's the voltage across the capacitor, which is uh, linear because the current is constant, okay? And the current, again, is the function of the voltage, the drive, and the resistor, and the ratio of the capacitor. So this is how this circuit works. Now, ceramic capacitor, the class two ceramic capacitor, the ferroelectric capacitor, like X7R, for example, this is an X7R, have a non-linear behavior. That is, at a, when exposed to a DC bias, the capacitance goes down, okay? And this behavior can actually be useful in this uh, application of the precharger because when the voltage on the capacitor is low, then the voltage of the transistor is high. And if the capacitance is high, and here's this capacitance, this is the auxiliary capacitance, then we'll start with a smaller current, and as the voltage on the capacitor builds up and the transistor voltage going down, capacitance is going down, here this one is going down, and the current then of the charging will go up. So this will actually accelerate the charging process while keeping the system under arrest as far as the safe operating area. So in order to simulate it, I'm using here a model for a nonlinear capacitor. This model is actually based on this basic state equation of a capacitor. This is the variable capacitance and this is the derivative. This represents the variable capacitance voltage of this node here, variable capacitance, and the derivative is done by this uh, operator that LTSPICE has, the operator of, of this voltage, this voltage here across this uh, emulated capacitor. Now the voltage which represents the capacitance is actually generated by a table, which is the dots here that I've 
uh, sort of uh, put down here in a table. So this is the voltage and this each pair here is the voltage and capacitance, voltage and capacitance. So we have a voltage here which represent the capacitance. It's put into this equation, so this value here. There is a scaling factor here of uh, microfarad, okay? And because these numbers are uh, really large numbers like farads and this is correcting it. So this actually represents this nonlinear capacitor. And here is the operation. We see very nicely how the current starts low and then it goes up as the capacitance is going down exactly what we want. So this can actually help us with uh, the self-operating area issue. But the question is, how can we tell in this uh, type of operation if we are safe or not? Because uh, current is changing and uh, the value is changing and obviously the, the time span is larger than this uh, short interval. So the question is, how can we get it? Well, you can actually calculate it, but one way is to use simulation. Now, as it turns out, LT spice has means to look at the safe operating area. This is, uh, you might say, a device that you get from the library. It's a overlay. You see, it's supposed to go over a transistor. So when you put it as an overlay, it will connect to the drain, source, and gate. So here is actually the connection to the current toward the drain. And here we have two points that can be now looked at for the temperature of the junction. It's cal calculating the temperature of the junction and the temperature of the case. Very, very neat. So you see how it works. You get it from the library and you put it over the transistor. Now you have to make sure, of course, that you have the right overlay for the particular transistor. These should be for the same, uh, not same type of transistor. Unfortunately, we don't have them for all transistors, but for demonstration, I've just selected this transistor with the overlay which correspond to this transistor, okay? So we have here now the two outputs, which is the case temperature and the junction temperature. Now if you right click this eye uh, area here, a window pops up, which you can then use to set the ambient temperature, that is the temperature that the whole story is really starting, as well as the thermal resistance between the case and ambient, okay? In our application, there is a liquid cooling and the transistor is placed on the uh, cooled plate, so the thermal resistance is low, and I've set it to one, and this, of course, is a number that can be changed, and obviously, if the transistor is just in air, you have to put a large number which represent the thermal resistance between the case and air. And here is what we are getting. This is the current of the transistor and again because we are using a nonlinear capacitor it starts low and it goes up. Now the green is the junction temperature. This is very nice which is which is calculated on the fly as the simulation goes on. You see we start with 75 degrees this is the uh, starting point the ambient temperature you might say and then it goes up to 92, well below the 175, and then it cools off uh, as the power dissipated is becoming lower because the current is going up, but the voltage is going down, okay? So the amount of power is lower here, so actually the junction cools off. The case has some delay because, the, because of the heat capacitance of the device, and then, of course, it cools off again. Very, very neat. In here, I'm showing actual measurement of a real system that uh, we have built. And here is the transistor current. And we are using this nonlinear effect of the ceramic capacitor. We see here the voltage of the capacitor being 
well, almost linear. It's not linear because here the current is changing, so there is a sort of a bending. The slope here is higher because of the higher current. Now here we have uh, 100 millisecond per division, so we see that uh, the charging process goes at about, say, 300 millisecond uh, from zero to full voltage, which is in this case uh, 50 or 60 volt. So this brings me to the end of this uh, presentation. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.